Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at mitigating spanning tree protocol attacks. We'll be discussing spanning tree attacks, mitigating those attacks, configuring port fast, configuring BPDU guard, configuring root guard, configuring loop guard. We're also going to look at configuring spanning tree protocol security, implementing that security. And finally, we'll talk about layer two VLAN security. This episode is part of my series on network security. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. Threat actors can manipulate the spanning tree protocol, STP, to conduct an attack by spoofing the root bridge and changing the topology of the network. Attackers can make their host appear as root bridges and therefore capture all traffic for the immediate switch domain. So they can take their PC, their computer, turn it and spoof it into a root bridge. And because it's now the root bridge, it can capture all the traffic that passes through this. To conduct an STP manipulation attack, the attacking host broadcasts the spanning tree protocol bridge ID units, BPDU, containing configuration and topology changes that will force spanning tree recalculations. The BPDUs that are sent by the attacking host announce a lower bridge priority in an attempt to be elected as that root bridge. To mitigate spanning tree protocol manipulation tax, use the Cisco spanning tree protocol stability mechanisms to enhance the overall performance of the switches and to reduce the time that is lost during topology changes. Now, there are four spanning tree protocol stability mechanisms. Uh, port fast, BPDU guard, root guard, and loop guard. Now, you implement these on different devices, on different interfaces, depending upon where they are in the network. So once again, we all start up here with the primary root bridge. On the primary root bridge, we, we say we want to do a root guard here. So we are going to guard to make sure that the root process stays up here. It doesn't go beyond that to anything else. So if a PC is added here, we also put loop guard on here. And so loop guard stops those loops from happening, basically on our interconnected ports. We set up port fast here to secure our devices and then BPDU guard. So that way no BPDU messages will be accepted into the switch from any of these ports down here, the clients on your network. Port fast can be enabled on an interface by using the spanning tree port fast command. Alternately, port fast can also be enabled globally. So globally, we can do it on all ports by using the spanning tree port fast default command. Uh, on the per interface, you need to be up here in an interface or range of interfaces. Here, you're in global configuration mode when you want to do it globally. Now, to verify whether port fast is enabled globally, you can either use the show running command and go down and look for any lines that begin with span for spanning tree, or you can use the show spanning tree summary command. And once again, if, if port fast is enabled globally, if you want to look on a per interface basis, what we can do is the show running config interface and then what the interface is. So you can look at the specific interface or we can go show spanning tree interface and then um, looking at the details of that. BPDU guard can be enabled on a port here per interface by using the spanning tree BPD guard, BPUD guard enable command on an interface. So you have to be into that interface. Globally, you can also enable BPDU guard by using spanning tree port fast BPDU guard default. And once again, that's in global configuration mode. Now, to display information about the state of spanning tree, use the show spanning tree summary. And then finally, 
always enable BPDU guard on all PortFast enabled interfaces. Once again, PortFast skips some of the negotiation um, process. So it's streamlined when you connect in your device into that port, it goes green much quicker than it does without that port fast. And if you do port fast, make sure you always put BPDU guard on those port fast enabled ports. Root guard is best deployed on ports that connect to switches that should not be the root bridge. These are probably older switches on your network. They shouldn't be the bridge because they don't have as much CPU processing power, as much RAM as your other switches. So you don't want them to happen. Now, if a root guard enabled port receives BPDUs that are superior to those that the current root bridge is sending, that port is then moved to a root inconsistent state, a root inconsistent state. This effectively equals to an STP listening state and no data traffic is forwarded across that port. Recovery occurs as soon as the offending device ceases to send their superior BPDUs. Now on an interface, we can use the spanning tree guard root interface command here to configure root guard on a specific interface. To view root guard ports that have received a superior BPDU guards and are in a root inconsistent state, we use the command show spanning tree inconsistent ports and it'll list those ports out. A layer two loop is usually created when a spanning tree protocol port in a redundant topology stops receiving BPDUs and erroneously transitions to the forwarding state. Now, the spanning tree protocol loop guard feature provides additional protection against layer two loops. If BPDUs are not received on a non-designated loop guard enabled port, the port transitions to loop inconsistent blocking state instead of the listening learning forwarding state. Without the loop guard feature, the port would assume a designated port role and create loops. Now, loop guard is enabled on all non-root guard ports, so enabled on all non-root guard ports by using the spanning tree guard loop protocol, or sorry, command. Now, loop guard can also be enabled globally by using spanning tree loop guard default. And this is a global command. This enables loop guard on all point-to-point -point connections like serial connections. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on mitigating spanning tree protocol attacks. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my social and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com, and you can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on network security. In the bottom right is one of my videos I think you'll really like. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on network security. Once again, I'm Kevin. This here is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.